Yes, we're joined by Osman Bakash, member of Hezbollah Tahrir in uh, Beirut, who joins us now. Many thanks for being with us. So uh, let's actually start with Libya, uh, because it seems most of the activity has been there today. We're hearing of so much violence in Tripoli. It's hard to confirm the reports that we get. And it's hard to see it as well because there's such a strong media blackout right now in the capital. But uh, knowing what we do about Muammar Gaddafi, do you think he's going to give up without one hell of a fight? Well, uh, no, he, he must be now putting up his, his last uh, at futile attempt to cling, up, to cling on to power. But it's, it's, it has become obvious that uh, his last hours are being uh, counted down. He barely, ma barely managed to control his enclave in Bev Ajizia and the vicinity. Uh, everything is crumbling around him. Now really the issue um, is uh, the post Gaddafi post new regime in Libya. As we saw today in Egypt and in Tunisia, we saw clearly that the revolution there is not yet completed. So there is a common theme now across a Muslim nation, which is the need to bring this revolution in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, I Iraq, and elsewhere to really a uh, positive end, namely the obtaining of true uh, freedom and independence from the colonial regime established by the West. Well, how much does the West have to do with this? I mean, to what extent are these anti-imperialist <coughs> movements? Well, the West to begin with, all these uh, uh, regimes uh, set up in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Libya, and elsewhere, they all are a legacy of the colonial era. Um, this, uh, the weapons now used by Kazefi or in Egypt, or in Tunisia, uh, these are all supplied by the British and the American and the European. These so-called military forces, they are trained by the Western schools in France, Britain and America. So uh, the West now cannot convince us by shedding some crocodile tears that now they are concerned about the loss of innocent civilians at the hands of the very dictators that they impose uh, uh, upon our area. So uh, we know that in the case of Egypt, say, the Americans have been pumping $1.5 billion a, a year for the great services that the regime of Mubarak has been offering to the American policy and interests in the Middle East. And similarly with Gaddafi, and similarly in Tunisia as, uh, and the rest of the region. So now we here in, in Hizb tahrir we really call for this historic moment, for, the, for this revolution to succeed in severing all colonial legacy with these regimes and to make sure that there is no cosmetic change. We saw today the demonstration in Egypt calling for to bring down the government of Ahmad Shafi, who was assigned by the ex-dictator Mubarak. Similarly, in Tunisia, Ben Ali, when he fled away, he turned over power to his friend, longtime friend, Ghanoushi. And now the question in Libya is the post Gaddafi era where the, it's time for us to uh, assume our own uh, freedom and uh, independence without any uh, string attached to Western powers, France, Britain, Italy, or America. Well, uh, we will talk more about that post Gaddafi era in just a moment, Mr. Osman Bakesh, but you also, of course, talked about Tunisia and uh, this. Uh, issue of the Prime Minister Mohamed Ghanouchi. And that, let's uh, continue the discussion with our guest joining us uh, from Beirut, uh, Osama Bakash, Director of the Central Media Office in uh, Hezb al Tahrir. Um, let's talk about post Gaddafi if that day will come. I mean, I assume that's the initial question. Is Gaddafi going to go? Yeah, this is by now, this is by now a foregone conclusion. Kazafi days are numbered and uh, his time is up. So yeah, now is the time to proceed and plan for a post kazafi new regime, as I said, away from any connection whatsoever to the Western colonial powers. 
is we, this is why we have to issue a direct appeal to the military forces, security forces in Libya to secure all state facilities and uh, documents uh, to, to keep the damage to a minimum. We need to uh, restart rebuilding our nation uh, immediately once Gaddafi is brought down, which is not far away from now. Well, you know, this week uh, Fidel Castro has been weighing in on uh, the situation in the region. Uh, about four days ago, he said that the whole situation in Libya is about NATO um, coming in with its uh, military and that uh, the United States won't let uh, the oil of Libya go out of its control. Of course, Fidel Castro is not a liked man in the United States. Uh, but today we're seeing somehow indications that what he's saying might be coming true. We've seen NATO hold a meeting and they're saying that they will consider military action if the UN Security Council says so. Now the UN Security Council has brought its meeting um, three days forward and they're meeting today. Um, is there military options on the table right now for NATO or the United States? Well, yes, this is, this is a serious issue now being debated by the Western power. And it's no secret whether it's the oil question in Libya, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iraq, the whole area. We know the oil is the, fr uh, the first prize that the imperial powers uh, strive for. However, today we in Hizb al-Tahrir, we issued a press release cautioning against any and all uh, foreign involvement and intervention in our issues. Uh, we here want to um, uh, expose the hypocrisy of the colonial agenda. These governments in meeting in, in whether in NATO or uh, European Union, uh, they are shedding crocodile tears claiming that they want to protect uh, civilian lives and all that when they are the true criminals themselves. Uh, here we want to issue a clear warning not to repeat the fiasco of what happened in Somalia back in 1993. At the time they, they launched uh, Operation Restore Hope, supposedly they, they uh, gave it a cover that they wanted to provide uh, food relief to the civilian in Somalia when indeed their uh, real intent was to bring in American hegemony and control in Somalia. Again, the point here in brief is that we as Muslims, we do not accept any sort of foreign intervention in our local affairs, whether it's in Libya, Egypt, or Tunisia, or elsewhere for that matter. This is a clear message to the Western public opinion to be wary from their uh, governments attempt to drag them and, and engage them in the um, issues of the Middle East as they did back in Iraq and in Afghanistan. We know if what I the Americans tried to... Here, I mean, um, there is the argument that you could say that Washington is damned if they do and damned if they don't. When they don't say something, they're attacked and criticized. When they do do something, they're attacked and criticized. So what exactly is needed from countries like the United States? We want them to keep, the, keep their evil away from us. We want them not to support the di dictators and brutal regimes across the uh, nation from Morocco to Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, Jordan, and the, and the rest of the region. We want them to mind their business. <coughs> we do not accept for them to intervene in our affairs in any way, form, or shape. Uh, they should not uh, claim that uh, they fear for, for their security and stability due to the so-called flood of refugees coming from Libya or Tunisia. The point is, let them mind their business and stay away from our back and not intervene in our local affairs. All these re uh, dictator regimes, in, uh, they have been propped up and supported by the Western powers. Okay, do stay with us uh, for the moment. Let's press TV's extensive coverage of the situation, not only in Tunisia, but Libya, Bahrain, and elsewhere in the country as well. I'm being told Mama Gaddafi is speaking, so let's go straight in and have a listen. The revolution which revived Omar al-Mukhtar again. And the 
Can you do it? All these sacrifices they wanted with this movement to, to, to finish this. I am I am in the middle of the of the people and we will fight till the last bullet and we will defeat them. We we will defeat them. This the soil is very as, uh, we will defeat them all. We will succeed as we as we defeated the the Italian colony. This is the this is the threat, the strength which will not be defeated. The youth is stirring. The life without dignity well, it's not worth at all. This, these flags, these green flags, without those fl green flags, there is no use of life. The, this, the, the, the flag, the green flag, which is which has been here for years and years. You are youth, a Libyan youth. Take your time in any any place, in the streets, in the squares, whatever, whatever you want to do. You, you, you live in dignity. Muammar Gaddafi is one of you. He is not different from you. What do you want to do? You do now. You can dance, you can sing, whatever you want. So, that was uh, Muammar Gaddafi speaking uh, an unusually short speech. I, I, I do wonder how long was he speaking before we, we came on air. Uh, I'll try and get that information for you. But much shorter than uh, is usual for Muammar Gaddafi. What we heard, uh, he said, I'm in the middle of the people. Uh, it seems Muammar Gaddafi there uh, at the top of a building um, with, as you can see, if we can get that live image up again, um, a crowd of people um, that uh, have gathered holding Muammar Gaddafi posters, obviously pro uh, Muammar Gaddafi um, uh, protesters there. I, I'm sure that uh, others would have a different take on why those protesters or how those protesters um, are on uh, uh, the ground. He said, I'm in the middle of the people. We will defeat them just like we did in Italy, of course, talking about the revolution uh, a few decades ago. Uh, we will defeat all who are against us. The Libyan youth, take your time, do whatever you want to do, dance and sing. Muammar Gaddafi is one of you. Um, life without honour is worthless. <clears throat> he said before coming uh, to air. Uh, uh, an absolutely uh, fascinating development. Let's get some response from our guest who uh, is with us, uh, Osman Bakash, director for the Central Media Office at, at Hezbollah Tahrir in Beirut, who is still with us. So, Muammar Gaddafi speaks again. I'm not sure if you saw the images, but there was a group of uh, what seemed to be pro-Gaddafi protesters. They were at least holding banners with his picture. And, and you heard him speak there. What do you make of it? Do we still have Osman Bakash with us? have Osman Bekesh with us? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you fine. Oh, excellent. Just wondered uh, what you made of uh, Muhammad Gaddafi's short speech. Yeah, I, uh, I, did, not hear, I did, did not hear his speech.